Good evening everyone, this is Leslie with Color Art. We're going to be doing another uh, piece with the brand new resin art pigments, if I can get my camera forwarded here. It's an epoxy coloring system with uh, resin friendly color mixed with minerals in mica uh, in a quick mix formula that mixes easily, very easily. In your resin. Uh, I have all of my colors laid out but this this is blushing lily so I wanted you guys to see at least one of them mixed. I hate videos where we're taking too long a time mixing but for beginners it doesn't hurt to see this now. These are little tiny serving spoons that are about a quarter teaspoon per spoonful. Um, I have about two ounces in each of these cups so I'm using two scoops for that. The rest of my colors are, I have aquamarine, I have some seagrass, I have some dragon gold, and some of the purple sapphire. I guess I'm stuck on this color combination. I did a dirty pour with these last night and it was pretty interesting. I did a test. So I, I hope it comes out just as nice on the actual canvas as it does on the test. As you guys know, it doesn't always work out that way. Um, I don't know if I'm going to use any white, but I do have some clear because I like using clear for texture and I've been watching other artists way more talented than I using uh, uh, the uh, clear on top to get some more dimension because it pushes it down and creates other color combinations. So the beauty of the resin art is it mixes faster than a paste actually with just as much color and vibrance and I'm not smelling anything that smells like oil paint or turpentine you can see there's plenty of color this is that purple sapphire this is the seagrass green I hope I can get this in the camera I actually need more sticks. I don't believe it, but I do. My apologies. A container over here, no doubt. This is the aquamarine. It will look a little bit green in the camera. That's how teals are. They either look green or blue, or they look either blue when they're green and green when they're blue. Aqua means actually a blue teal. This is the dragon gold. nice antique gold. It's not a bright high yellow gold. We do have a high yellow gold coming, but right now that's the only gold we have for the resin art at this point. And this is the Blushing Lily. And I am in love with this color. Absolutely enamored with it. So, <laughs> I've been thinking about this for a couple days and I'm dedicating this to my friend Judy. Judy, if you're listening, thumbs up to you. She knew that I had prepped a canvas already with black. I like how my colors look with black. And yet, if I'm mixing too much of the stone coat in, because I love the beautiful patterns, uh, I, can, I can go crazy with the black. So I decided to solve my problem. By, um, oh, by the way, this is a pretty paint skin. I don't know. Get my 
camera up close. I didn't intend, I didn't realize that was on there. But this is a paint skin from the resin art drying. Actually, here's a second one that came off of the same pour. I thought it was pretty cool. I'm going to save these for something dimensional. I can use my pieces. Anyway, so I had um, went ahead and base coated this black with stone coat and resin. So we've already got a layer of black resin on here. Not sure how this is going to work. I did two of them. I'm picking the one that had a couple little spots on it that I kind of don't mind because I can probably float paint up there or sand it or whatever I've got to do, but this is an experiment. Now, I'm going to do a dirty pour, and I don't think this little cup's big enough because I want to get a decent swirl in here. So really like them at the pink cups though. Maybe I'll do two of them and see how much I love. Ah, I should make up my mind. Okay, so I'll do a little bit of the aquamarine on the bottom. And some of this purple sapphire. Some of the blushing lily. I may need to mix up more of these colors. Some of the seagrass green. Just a couple colors I know I want to use also as a backdrop. Some dragon gold. Then I'm going to put some more of the blushing lily in it. Some more of the purple sapphire. I only put one little drop of this of the aquamarine in there just so if it bleeded out into the other aquamarine. So there is a method to my madness, I'm hoping. Okay, so I have a dirty pour. I hope there's enough in here. I can reserve some colors. Now the one I'm worried I may not have enough of is let me get my canvas out a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. So I've got my gold and my green over here. That's more for dirty cup. This was actually more for dirty cup. I wanted to pour out some of this lily and possibly some of the aquamarine. So I'm actually going to mix up more of the blushing lily. My new favorite color in the whole wide world. At least this week. Yeah, I'll mix up some more of that. This is definitely an experiment. Okay, now that's mixed up. And I've got my dirty pour. Oh, we have a visitor. Why we have visitors? I don't know. It is uh, still warm here in California. Let me get these up on my little uh, paint caps trick I learned from Jeff from Artist Till Death. Prop them up on the tops of the paint cans. The old resin peels right off and they're really level. It keeps your piece nice and level and flat. I love them, <laughs> and I reuse them over and over and over again. So just a pro tip from Jeff at Artist Till Death, if you guys have never seen their YouTube channel, I recommend that you go uh, check them out and subscribe. Okay, so here goes nothing. Part of me wanted to build color from a corner, but part of me also just kind of wants to do a, kind of a soft amoeba. So, let's 
So I'm going to do the soft amoeba. Wow, that's really pretty on that black. I'm going to do this a little tiny bit at a time, do the color at a time, work it in. I can also do a second layer. Remember, this has already been resined with black on the base. Okay, that's interesting. There we go. turquoise right away on the other side or not and I don't kind of gonna leave some room here and I think I'm gonna blow this out with some of this aquamarine can you tell I'm a little bit nervous here colors. I think I'm going to use a little clear. I'm going to put some clear in a little cup so I can bend it and just pour a tiny stream of clear out. So this is my clear resin. Let's see if I can get just a tiny stream out. Yeah. See what happens is it changes the color of the one it's poured next to because it's kind of pushing it down. You see that effect? I don't know if you guys can see that. I want to show you this before I go on. As soon as I start blowing it around, you see how the aquamarine is pushing in and creating a pattern and it's actually two-tone. That's just the clear. That's all that is. It's just the clear. So, That's lacing all on its own. That's crazy. Check that out, man. I don't know if I can get this close up. You see that? That's crazy. Well, we want to encourage that. I'm kind of liking what's happening there, even though it's not at all what I expected. I'm going to try to see if I can't get.
I'm liking those cells. I'm going to try to just pour some more, I mean, push some of this over. I don't know if I want the turquoise on both sides. I'm thinking. Okay, well, I hope y'all are ready for this, and this may be the wrong thing to do because I'm loving what's happening here, and I'm going to repeat that color combination. Part of me just wants to move it ever so slightly. But we don't want to lose those cells. That's kind of amazing. Look at that. Oh, well, do I do my dirty pour? I am. I think I'm going to flip it around. Do it from here. This may look a little insane, and I want it to kind of go over some of this black. I hope it fits with the rest of this, because, again, this is unexpected up here. And I'm loving that. I'm going to do this with intent next time. I don't know if you can see this yet, but the gold underneath is turning pink and turning green and turning turquoise from all that clear and that aquamarine and uh, blushing lily getting right into that gold. I'm going to, I'm not moving that. So here goes nothing. Well, that's a crazy amount of green. Not exactly what I wanted right there. I'm going to try to push that back with some clear. See that? And it'll push out the other colors that are underneath it. Yeah, that's a trick I saw. Um, who did that? I mean, I've been watching Petra do it. I started, oh my God, look at that. I started experimenting on my tiles. <sighs> Let me pop the bubbles. I don't know how much I want to mess with this. <sighs> this is nuts. I know it's a crazy abstract, but it's a really pretty crazy abstract. Still a tiny bit of this teal and purple that was at the bottom of that dirty pour. So, I have no idea what I'm doing, guys, but this is 
pretty darn cool. I'm liking what's happening there. I'm liking what's happening there. But I kind of want to put, of course we want to fart around with this. What do I do now that I put that little doll up there? I don't want to want to disturb anything else, so. I wanted to break up that green a little bit. I mean, I love that green, but that was really green. So, Looks like I got lots of bits of gold in there. The gold. So the question is, do I let that dry with a hole and come back later? Do I put resin there? Kind of liking what's happening there. I didn't need to heat that up. I can hear people telling me to stop and other people telling me to pour more colors on. Okay, that's interesting. Did my heat gun just stop working? Wow. Well, I'm going to get my torch out. That's a bummer, because I really want to push stuff around, uh, but I got to pop those bubbles. So, pardon the sound, because it's a big old torch. push as much as this. I gotta figure out what I did wrong.
That's a little baby heat gun. At least it'll give me the, the heat I need. So, back to the drawing board. Is this done? What do you guys think? Wow, I kind of like what's happening in there. I kind of don't want these colors to run together. I mean, I mean, I know I'm setting myself up for a second layer, or just know that this is a texture pour. It's not meant to. kind of liking what I got happening here. This is really pretty. I mean, I know I can mess with it more. I can always mess with it more, but yeah, I've got nice patterns. That dirty pork pen has made it crazy looking, but there's some nice patterning right here. I'm really liking what's happening where the color went over the gold. That's, I know the camera's not going to pick that up, but it's changing the color of the dragon gold. So am I just too chicken to not completely pour it off one corner? Because it is kind of a big amoeba in the middle, but... It's just so flippin' pretty, the way it is. I'm moving it really, really slowly. I don't know. I'm liking what pulled out here. I'm liking what pulled out here. I actually like that strange pattern in there. Part of me just wants to, uh, I know, I don't want to change it, huh? My big uh, abstract blob. <laughs> I want to see what happens with a dirty pour with these colors. On the little tile, it was so gorgeous. I'm liking how all those colors came out. And were very, very vibrant. Well, I'm back and here's what my piece looks like dry. What's interesting is you can see that the next layer of resin is sitting on top. But I actually love 
the texture that is giving, I'm not sure if you know this is a masterpiece that I would sell, but I certainly love. Well, I'd be happy to sell if somebody wanted to buy it. But I certainly love. Come on, camera, let me in. How, first of all, the colors are magnificent. Ooh, you see that little piece where the clear dropped on top and created these little marble marks? See these little kind of marble marks right there? Let's see if I can get a close up on that. My camera's not really behaving. See those interesting little marks right there? That's where I dropped the resin and it created, it goes down in to the inner depths and finds the colors. I thought this was interesting when the uh, aquamarine and the lily was going over the gold. That gold was taking on other colors. Now it looks like it's kind of gone back to gold most of it, but there's parts of it here where you can see the gold is kind of turned red. Um, as far as that dirty pour, I think the green was so bright, I didn't really need to put gold in the dirty pour. But uh, this turned out interesting. I mean, this might be something you'd stick on the wall in your office. <laughs> but the coolest part is I could leave this just like this and not have to do a float at all. Now, there's probably a little couple of little pieces that I might sand and touch up if, you know, if this was a finished piece going into my gallery. We used to uh, show at Chris Sorensen Gallery. But pretty interesting colors are magnificent. Let's, let's not even, I didn't even talk about the colors. The colors are absolutely magnificent. Even up here in that blushing lily, which is, Hard to hear, hard to see on the camera, but where I put in that extra bit of clear, again we got a secondary color of that color, and I don't know if I can get a close up of this section right here. Uh, sorry, I know I'm trying to hold this thing instead of using the camera. I'm just liking what happened with these crazy colors right here. Not sure how much you guys can see those patterns. Anyway, this is my official second canvas with the resin art, luster pigments. Uh, the stone coat mat was used to put the first coat of black resin on and uh, yeah the rest is just uh, creative history I hope you've enjoyed this you guys have a great day bye bye